Hello darlings, welcome to Game Book Daily. I'm Dom. And I'm Sippy. Well, have we got the tidbits of news for you today. Today we'll be discussing the Vicarious Vision studio story. So, as some of you may be aware this week, Activision Blizzard has moved all of its staff from Vicarious Vision studio into its Blizzard development pool. Vicarious Vision is a development team that has been developing titles for Activision Wing as a company since 2005, developing a large range of titles including those such as uh, Tony Hawk, Crash Bandicoot, Guitar Hero, Spider-Man, Destiny 2, Skylanders, and uh, Call of Duty. They've handled Nintendo DS, Game Boy Advance games over the past couple of decades, and delivered Skylanders Trap Team in 2014, Skylanders Imaginators in 2016, and in 2017 they were assigned to work as a support team for Bungie for Destiny 2. This update, however, is not a recent development. The, uh, the Vision team have had good standing with Blizzard, but chose the 22nd of January to announce the merger. But the big question is, why do people care? Well, you all remember Diablo 2. Up until 2020, the Diablo 2 remake was set to be developed by Blizzard's Team 1, and was the go-to group for reworking classic games. However, because of Warcraft 3, and it wasn't received positively, only scoring 59 on Metacritic, it currently stands as Blizzard's lowest scoring game ever. Total documents at the time blamed the game's failures on poor planning, miscommunication, and a rushed release due to financial pressure from management, among other factors. But that that only only factor only factor is mismanagement. Not wanting to make the same mistake, Blizzard removed the development team and have since handed it to Diablo 4 development squad, labeling it Diablo 2 Resurrected. Enter Vicarious Visions. The studio and its team at 200 will no longer be the lead for any games. Instead, they'll support existing Blizzard projects, which could also include ongoing games like World of Warcraft and Hearthstone. This would all seem to align nicely with the Blizzard strategy to release all of its IPs into the mobile space. Daniel Allegre expressed the desire to release a mobile version of every one of its franchises. Naturally, that's not going to happen anytime soon or without sufficient manpower. However, with an additional 200 developers, the chances of that would seemingly be much more likely. So with all that being said, is this a good thing? Well, yes and no. On one side, we have a team that developed some very successful remakes, including Crash and the recent return of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. And with the merger means the end of their own personal projects. On the other side of this, we have an experienced development team working on big, beloved Blizzard IPs, which could mean in theory we get a better final product and less likely to run into another Cyberpunk 2777 experience. No doubt we'll find out more later down the line, but with Vicarious Vision studio head Jen O'Neill being promoted to Vice President of Development, I'm sure there's going to be more shakeups and exciting news to come. So, yeah, I didn't know who these guys were, aside from Tony Hawk's 1 and 2, um, and the only, the only thing I know about Skylanders is it wasn't that well received inside the community. Well, I mean, so yes and no, like, because uh, we used to be big into Skylanders. Uh, my, my, my son, um, his mom got him the Imaginators a while back, uh, but we, we stopped getting Skylanders after the second one just because, like, it's a game and then there's an expectation of you buying even more toys to be able to play the game. And in or like, no joke, in order to 100%, like you wanna get a plat in Skylanders on PlayStation, you have to spend several hundred dollars because you need to get every single one of these little freaking things. Um, which is a pain in the ass, but I, I didn't know, like I thought that was Toys for Bob, but apparently it stopped being Toys for Bob at 2014, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I don't think people are gonna miss Skylanders too much. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of remakes at the moment. I think we've gone a bit remake mad. You look at Resident Evil, they're just kind of rebirthing every single one of their IPs at the moment. And as much as I had a huge wave of nostalgia for 1 and 2, if it meant that we got a really, really good Diablo 4 or some amazing WoW expansions or, God forbid, you know, WoW 2, which is completely, you know, a bit of a mystical beast at the moment, um, I would be all over that or hell you know even a new a new product and but th i think the important thing here is that they this team has delivered and done it well in the past and they are really experienced with 
working alongside other teams and kind of being support devs. Um, and I say you look at games such as Destiny and uh, it's, it, I think it's a great example. So I'm really excited to see what they can do. And, uh, you know, looking at Wolf, you know, a Frozen Throne remake, um, or Warcraft remake, should I say, it was absolute garbage. So, you know, maybe the big shakeup is, you know, a, a really good thing. I hope it is. Um, and we see great things going forward. Yeah, I think... Um... On that note, though, that I, I I think you're very very much correct. Like the remakes that these guys have worked on have both been extremely well received. Uh, both the Crash remake and the Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two package, um, extremely well received. And by comparison to the other uh, Warcraft Three make, oof, 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 that one didn't even. That one even didn't get like the the uber blizzard fanboy love it just got hate because it was so bad yeah i mean it it, so I, it was rushed um and it had such a huge amount of pre-orders attached to it i think there was a say there were some internal documents leaked and uh, it it showed how much pressure the team was put under but nonetheless um as we've learned over the last year two three years even should we say that releasing a game early uh, isn't a good thing at all and uh, if people can get or if companies can guarantee that we're going to get something good I think people are now in a better place to understand um, you know a rushed product is never a great thing but the most important thing I'm looking forward to is uh, when we get the Crash Bandicoot class in WoW yeah so looking. yeah that'll be uh, that'll be right around the same time that we get that Murlocs actually become a playable class in wow which has been an april fool's gag for almost as long as wow has been a thing so hey don't crush my dreams <sighs> crush